my friends, welcome back. I'm going to talk to you today about sheer flow. What the heck is sheer flow? Sheer flow is a way to measure the strength and how often we need fasteners when doing built up members like this or built up beams. Okay. So what can you think of? What's some fasteners that you can think of? Well, I could do, I could use nails. Okay, this project here, this, this particular example is going to use nails. Uh, we could use bolts. Or we could test the strength of uh, glue. Okay, glue. How much glue do I need that, that will keep that joint from shearing? Okay, shear flow is a measure of force per length. Okay. And it's given by little q, okay? And we say little q is F divided by S, okay? So F is the shear force of the fastener. What does it take to shear the fastener? To Whether that's a bolt, whether that's a nail, whether that's glue, whatever it is, right? And then S is the spacing. How far apart are those? And what we're going to do today is calculate how far apart do I need to put a nail or whatever it is in my board to endure some kind of load, okay? So this would be in sheer force, would be in something like pounds, and spacing would be in something like inches, okay? So the units are going to be a force over length every time. So it's either newtons per millimeter or pounds per inch or whatever you got there, okay? So Q equals force, shear force divided by the spacing. Now there's another equation. My students call it the Vicky equation. Okay. So if your name is Victoria or you go by Vicky, your street name could be little Q. <laughs> okay, sorry. I don't, I don't know what just happened right there, okay? VQ over I, the Vicky equation. Not the Vicky equation. That was what we did. Tau equals VQ over IT, if you remember. But this is another thing here. So this guy, this little Q is equal to that one. And this is shear flow. This is a way to calculate the distance between fasteners, okay? So let's see how this works, okay? We know what all the things are. We know what V is, that shear force. Where are we going to find that? In our shear moment diagram, yes. Q, what is that? First area moment of inertia, that guy is what? The sum of the YAs, remember that? And then I, the second area moment of inertia for rectangular beams, 112 bh cubed. Okay, so we know all the things in these equations. Let's see how we use them, okay? So if the maximum shear force a nail can withstand is 15 kilonewtons, what is the spacing of the nails along this beam? Okay, so we've got two planks of wood that's 400 by 100, and they're nailed together. Ever so often. Now, how long is it? I don't know. It could be forever long. I don't know. But what is the spacing that I need between the nails? Okay. So let's see if we can do this. Now, one of the things that you have to understand on this problem is that these nails don't come one at a time. They come in pairs. Okay. So if it's going to take 15 pounds to shear that nail off, then to shear that row of nails takes how much? 30, right? I'm gonna have to multiply by two, okay? So on this problem, little q is equal to F divided by S, which is the force that it takes to shear a nail is given, right? 15 kilonewtons, but I gotta shear two of them. So two times 15 kilonewtons, and then S, that's what we're looking for, okay? Now, what is Q? I don't know, but maybe we can use this equation to find Q, okay? So let's do our VQ over I, okay? So V, now in this particular problem, V is given. What if I gave you a loaded beam and asked you what, what V to use, what would you do? I'd just draw a shear moment diagram and find the biggest V on the beam and I'd use that V, right? But in this particular case, they tell us the shear force is 50 kilonewtons. So V is just given. 
50 kilonewtons. Now again, you've got an equation with a bunch of unknowns in it. Make sure to watch your units, okay? Let's see, Q, what is Q? Now the way I like to think about Q is, remember Q is the area above or below the point that I'm interested in. But I like to think about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear away part of that beam, okay? So if I have something like, here's, here's our beam that we have. We have two pieces of wood, they're together, right? The nails are in here. But as that load is on there, it causes a shear and it's trying to tear this top board away from the bottom board, right? And so what is Q? Q is this, the area of that board that I am tearing away. If you with, are you with me on that? So on this problem, Q is gonna be this area right here. Because I'm trying to make this shear plane here fail where those two boards are nailed together so I can test the strength of those nails and how often do I need to put one. Okay, now I'm gonna put a dot here. Why a dot right in the middle of that shape? Because remember what is Q? Q is the area above the point of interest. So I'm looking at this plane right here is the one I'm interested in. So Q is this area up here, which is gonna be what? 100 times 400, that's the area. Remember, there's the equation for Q right there. Times Y bar, which is always measured from the neutral axis. So Y bar is this distance here, okay? from the neutral axis of the whole beam to the centroid of the piece part, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be what? 50, right? Now again, this is in millimeters, that's in millimeters, that's in millimeters. So Q is gonna be in millimeters cubed. Okay, calculator, what do you got to say to me here, clear? 100 times 400 times 50 is two with a bunch of zeros, right? Two, zero with one, two, three, four, five zeros. One, two, three, four, five zeros. Okay. Two million. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Two million. And what is the units on that two million? Two million what? Well, it's millimeters cubed, right? Because this was millimeters, that was millimeters, and that was millimeters. Now remember, millimeters cubed, in this case, not a volume, okay? It's a representation of an area and how far away the center of that area is from the neutral axis, okay? So it's a, it's a geometric property of the cross section. It's not a volume, okay? And then the last thing we need to calculate little q is i. Now always i on these built up beams we still consider the beam, the whole thing, the whole entire beam, both pieces together to be the beam, okay? So I, in this case, is 1 12th, the base, which is 400, times the height, which is 200, right? 200 cubed, okay? 2 times 4 is 6. Oh, Lord, what is that number here? Let's see. 400 times ooh, 200 cubed is big number, divided by 12 equals, okay, two, six, 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 how many sixes? One, two, three, four, five, six, ooh, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wah, 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 okay? We'll put 0.7, and what is that going to be? That's millimeters to the fourth, okay? So far, so good? I think we're ready to calculate a little Q here, right? I know, I know that, that, and that, so I can get that guy, right? So here we go. Little Q is equal to 50 kilonewtons. Should I convert kilonewtons? You know, no, because little Q up here had kilonewtons, so I'll have kilonewtons on both sides. That's going to cancel out, right? So 50 kilonewtons times little q, which is 2 million. And of course that is whoop, whoop, a mess is what that is. Millimeters cubed, okay, divided by this big rascal here, 266666. Six, 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 
6.66.7 millimeters to the fourth. And three of those go away there. And that's going to leave me with kilonewtons over millimeters, right? Which is a force over length, which is what we want, isn't it? Okay, how much is that? Oh my goodness, 50 times 2 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 2 million, isn't it? Yes, divided by answer equals 0.375. And that is kilonewtons per millimeter, okay? It seems like a little number, doesn't it? But watch what happens when I put that little number here for Q, right? So now 0.375 kilonewtons per millimeter is equal to, what, 2 times 15 is 30 kilonewtons divided by S. I need S by himself. I'll put him over there. Multiply divide by that. So S is equal to, what, um, 30 divided by 0.375 equals 80. So what does that tell me? For that load, right, for that load, I need every 80 millimeters, right, every 80 millimeters, I need to put two nails, two nails, two nails, right? Don't forget about that two right there. That's the biggest thing that people leave off is they forget how many fasteners there are per row. That's important that you get that, okay? So I hope that makes sense. That's sheer flow. Now, you got to see the next video because we're going to take that. That's a wimpy little problem. And we're going to amp it up into something really complex. See if you follow the next one. Hold on.